Hi, in this lecture we're going to talk a bit more about passwords as an authentication me mechanism. And I've playfully titled this lecture, The Best and Worst Form of Authentication, because in a sense that's almost what passwords are. So passwords are the most commonly used authenticator in computer systems. I mean, everybody who uses computers for anything has a password, at least one, that they use for stuff. Um, you probably have more than one because you have dozens of accounts that all require passwords. But interestingly, passwords are actually not very secure and they're not very good at authenticating people. But the big advantage is that users have been trained to use them and so for better or for worse they know how to do it and so it becomes the default password authentication mechanism or the default mechanism for authenticating people in any new system because you just assume that the users know how to, how to use them. But the problem is users actually don't use them very well. So what is a password? Well, password is usually just a combination of letters, numbers, and special characters that a user supplies in order to prove their identity. Um, frequently, those passwords are chosen by the user. And sadly, users are terrible at picking good passwords. And we'll take a look at this in a little bit. So users have really bad password habits. Um, in fact, a lot of us do too. So the problem is they pick simple passwords, passwords that are just basic words out of the dictionary or that are just slight modifications on basic words out of the dictionary. I mean, like some dictionary word with a number on it on the end or some dictionary word with a special character in front of it. All of those are just, they're too simple to be good passwords. Um, another bad habit that people have with passwords is that they reuse passwords between services. So your email account and your bank login and your QU login might all have the same password. Well, this is bad because if someone breaks into any one of the services that uses that password and they steal your password, then they have your password to everything else. Um, and that's really not good because sometimes you'll have, you'll have accounts on small services that really don't have much security at all. And so if someone breaks into there and steals their password database, all of a sudden, what, is it, what does the attacker get? Well, they have your username for that service, probably your email address, and the password you use for that service. Well, what happens if the password you used on that service is the same as the password for your email account? Well, now the hacker knows your email address and its password. And if they can get into your email, well, then they can access any of your services because almost every online service in existence has a I forgot my password button. And when you click on it, what does it say? Email me a new password. Well, if the, if the attacker has your email account, then you're, you're stuck. Um, password reuse actually causes uh, quite a few problems. Um, there will be a lot of instances where people will suddenly find out that their email account is sending out spam. A lot of those attacks come from the fact that somebody broke into a small service and, they re and you reused a password on your email account. So then they use your email account to send spam. Uh, there's also some instances where iTunes accounts were compromised this way. Someone compromised some small service and used the, the email addresses and passwords from that service, just tried them on iTunes. And the ones that worked, they went in and they had, they had these um, hacked accounts just buy a whole bunch of apps that would pay back to the hacker. Um, and so it just uh, password reuse is just a bad idea. So let's look at a specific password hack uh, in order to ascertain a little bit more about what users do with passwords. So in July of 2012, maybe earlier, but this is when they released it, hackers broke in and they stole 442,000 usernames and passwords from Yahoo. It wasn't actually like the main Yahoo account system. It was from a side uh, service that they had been running for a few years. The hackers posted these usernames and passwords online. Uh, more as like a, a thing to say, Yahoo, your security is terrible. Look at what we can get. But this gives us an opportunity because we can look through these usernames and passwords and figure out what kind of passwords do users pick. I mean, it's not very often you get a set of 442,000 actual passwords to study. So it's an interesting research opportunity. So there's a, a good uh, analysis of this hack at, at this link and some of the slides I'm about to go through, the data is from this link. Okay, so in that list of 442,000 passwords, what were the most common passwords? Well, here they are. The most common password and something that 1,667 people used was the password one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, the next most common was password. You know, things like welcome, ninja. This one's funny. I would have never thought that ninja would be a common password, but apparently it is. Um, and, and as you look down the list, you just see these are all apparently commonly used passwords because lots of users 
used these passwords. So users tend to pick common passwords, and sometimes they'll all pick the same password and not even realize it. Uh, so how about the length? How long were the passwords that user had, users used? So interestingly enough, when I look at this set of data from analyzing that hack, uh, we can see that the most common password length was actually eight. So that's pretty good, actually. I would have expected it to be lower, but that means that users are picking longer passwords. And between eight, nine, and 10, uh, we have over 50% of the passwords uh, encompassed in, in, a, in a length of eight, nine, or 10. That's not bad. If half the users have a password that's eight, eight characters or higher, I'm fairly happy with that, actually. So this shows me, this gives me some hope as I look at this data. But there's still a number of users who are down in the lower numbers of um, five, six, or seven. I'm actually gonna guess that Yahoo at some point added a restriction and said your password had to be at least six. Because there's, there's such a quick, there's such a sudden drop between six and five that makes me think that they added a restriction. And so only old accounts could have less than six and new accounts all had to have six or more because it seems strange to have such a sudden drop. But out of all the users, um, it's good to see that half of them have a password length of eight or higher. Okay, so complexity. This is the interesting one. Let's see if we can go through and, and be able to read this properly. So I'll jump right here in the middle and look here and say, okay, what this line means is that out of all of the passwords that were there, 146,000 of them were comprised of only lowercase letters. So that's 33%. So one out of three passwords were only lowercase letters, nothing else included. If I have lowercase letters and I add in symbolic characters, so I say, well, how many of the passwords were lowercase and were, were comprised of only lowercase letters and like special characters? Well, that would be 33.51%. Mm, it's not a big jump, actually. So that means that only like 0.5% of users uh, who were, yeah, only 0.5% of users added a symbol to their lowercase password. Almost 90%, 89.5% of users had a password that consisted of only lowercase letters and numbers. That's it, just lowercase letters and numbers. No uppercase letters, no special characters, et cetera, et cetera. Almost 90% of users. If I include uppercase characters as well, so they have lowercase, uppercase, and numeric. 97% of users had a password consisting of only lowercase, uppercase, and numeric pass, numeric characters. No special characters at all, just lower, upper, and numbers. 97%. So overall, as I look at this, I see that users are not very good at picking com complex passwords. A huge percentage of users pick passwords that are just simply not complex enough. So looking at this Yahoo Passwords takeaway, uh, users tend to pick simple passwords, <laughs> and some users tend to pick very simple passwords, which is just not good. But how much complexity do I really need in a password? Um, so in general, a password can be thought of as good if brute forcing it is gonna require the same work as brute forcing a 64-bit encryption key, uh, which means that we're trying to find equivalent work for two to the 64. Well, how do we measure brute force complication for a password? So let's start with a question. How many different four character, all lowercase passwords on there are there? So if I have a four character password and it's all lowercase, how many different passwords? Well, there are 26 possibilities for the first character, right? If we assume it's randomly chosen, then it could be one of any of the 26 letters. The second character could also be one of any of the 26 letters. And the third character could also be one of any of the 26 letters. And the fourth character could also be one of every 26 letters. So how many possible passwords are there? Well, I just multiply those numbers together. And that's just 26 to the four, right? So, it's, so as you look at this, you, what you want to think of is this is the number of different characters in the alphabet, and this is the length of the password. And that tells me how many possible passwords there are. So how do I translate that into something that's similar to the way that we thought about encryption keys or breaking uh, binary ideas? So if I have 26 to the four, well, I wanna figure out what that would be if it was a power of two, right? So if I just you know, apply a log base two to all of this, I find out that 26 to the four is about the same as two to the 18.8, which means that uh, a, yeah, which means that a four letter lowercase password has about 18.8 .8 bits of entropy. We'll call it entropy for now. 
uh, or 18.8 18, 18 bits of similarity to uh, a key. So a four character password is the same brute force complexity as a 19 bit encryption key. And this assumes that the password is generated completely randomly. That's my assumption here. If the password is not random, if it's like four letters that are a word or something like that, then this is much, much worse. So actually, if it's like four letter words, then the amount of uh, entropy or the number of bits of similarity to like an encryption key would be horribly bad, like almost immeasurably bad. So uh, as we talk about passwords here, I'm gonna continue with the assumption that it's randomly chosen, which kind of goes against what most people do. Most people do not, ran do not have passwords randomly chosen for them. They choose them based on something that they think will help them remember. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Well, let's make it better. So what if I did an eight character all lowercase password? So I'm gonna double the number of characters. This would be 26 to the eight, and now I get up to 37.6 bits of, entr of entropy. A Little bit better, but I'm still not up to 64. Okay, well, how about if I change my character set? Instead of just lower and uppercase letter, or instead of just lowercase letters, now I'll have eight characters, but they're lower and uppercase. Well, that would be 52 possible characters instead of 26. So I'll have 52 to the eight, and that would get me 45.6 bits of entropy. Better, still not there. Okay, so how about if I include eight characters? Some of them are lowercase, some of them are uppercase, and the numbers. So now we're adding lower, upper, and numbers. Well, that would be 62 possible characters, because I've added in the 10 numbers. 62 to the eight, that gets me 47.6 bits of entropy. Mm, adding the numbers didn't really do a lot for me, but did a little bit. So let's keep going. Eight characters, lowercase, uppercase, numbers, and special characters. And there are 32 possible special characters that you could have. So if we add 32 to that 62 to get to change the number of characters, I get 94 possible characters to the eight, and that gets me 52.4 bits of entropy. I'm still not there. But, okay, so seriously? A randomly generated eight character password with lowercase, uppercase numbers, and special characters is still not good enough? Yeah, that's not good enough. How long would a password need to be to get 64 bits of security into it? Well, when I do the math, I find out I need 10 characters. So if I have 94 possibilities in my alphabet, which would be lowercase, uppercase numbers, and special characters, and I have a 10 character password, then I finally get above 64 bits. I get 65.54. This is why passwords fail. Because unless people are using a 10 character completely random password, like randomly generated, then their password really isn't that good. So as an example, this is a randomly generated 10 character password consisting of the, the alphabet I just showed you. And as you look at that, I want you to ask yourself, what if I had a password like that for every account that I own? Would you remember them? Would you even remember that one? Mm, probably not. <laughs> if you make people use passwords like that, like if you enforce it, they're going to write it down, which also isn't good. I mean, for example, the, the test bed that you're using right now, I sent you a randomly generated password. Um, how many of you memorized that? Not many. Everybody just keeps it on email, cuts and pastes, or writes it down, or whatever. So it, it ends up being a problem. <laughs> So I want to discuss a better idea, something better than passwords. And these are called pass phrases. It's a similar concept, but it changes the math enough to make it a little bit better. So how about if we do phrases randomly chosen from sets of words instead of passwords randomly chosen from sets of characters? So phrases randomly chosen from words. So as an example, here's a six word phrase of just six random words. Ugly purple tissue slide sideways garble. It makes no sense, it doesn't even make grammatical sense. There's nothing like about this that, uh, that is logical. But if I were to sit down for 10 minutes, I could probably memorize that. And if I use it a few times, I would almost definitely memorize it. Could you remember that? I'll bet you could if you put in some effort. So how does the complexity of passphrases compare? Well, let's assume that we have a word list of 2,000 words, which is actually a fairly small number. Um, uh, the English language has some crazy number of words, but I said 2,000 because 2,000 words in most languages is what you need in order to be able to understand 70 to 80% of 
spoken conversation. So let's pretend that we're just going to use the 2,000 most common words out of English. And we're going to pick our passphrases uh, from randomly choosing those words. So we're just going to randomly choose words from that list and put them together to form a passphrase. How many words do we need for 64 bits? Well, when I did the math out, I determined that I needed six words. And the math looks just like it did for passwords. The number of possible items I'm, I'm going to choose, in this case there's 2,000 possible words, and the number of words. So 2,000 to the 6 gets me 65.79 bits. So that means I would need six randomly chosen words. So as we compare passwords and passphrases, the thing to ask yourself is which of those two would you rather memorize? I think for me, I would rather memorize the passphrase at the bottom. I would rather memorize that. It just seems easier to memorize and easier to think through. So I, I'm going to take a second and just give a, a few slides about what I'll call personal password hygiene. My recommendations for what you should do for your passwords on your accounts, etc., etc. So most important thing. Use a different password for every account that you have. When you, when, you use this, when you use the same password across accounts, you increase the risk that one account gets broken and that others get broken into because of it. Make your passwords incredibly complex or randomly generated. And at this point, you're stopping and you're thinking, you want me to have a randomly generated password for every account that I have. I've got dozens of accounts. There's no way I'm ever going to remember this. Even if I use a passphrase, there's no way I'm ever going to remember this. I agree. So I want to recommend you something called a password safe. Password safe is a program that stores in an encrypted way your passwords for any accounts that you have. It can also generate them randomly and you do this so that you don't have to remember your own passwords. All your passwords can be truly random because the program will generate random ones for you. So one password safe that I recommend is called KeyPassX and there's the link to it. But let me show you some features of how something like this would work. First, your database of passwords is always stored encrypted, and it's stored encrypted with a password that you choose. <clears throat> okay, but now we're back to this, right? You have to choose a good password. Well, my recommendation is choose a really good passphrase, something you know with six randomly chosen words that you can memorize, and use that as your one, use your one hard thing you need to remember is this one passphrase. You make that your password for your database. After you log into your database, it just stores big lists of usernames and passwords and the website that they go to, et cetera, et cetera. And you can open this thing up and you can um, cut and you can have it copy usernames and passwords to the clipboard. So if you need to log into a site, you open this up, find the login information for it, copy it to the clipboard and just paste it. If you're adding a new site, well, you pull up an entry, you add in the site, you put in the details like your username, the name of the site, et cetera, et cetera. And when, you, when it comes to picking a password, you can have the program randomly generate one for you. So in the example here, someone's generating a 30-character password, and they get to pick. Well, what kind of characters do you want to have? And so it can pick from the letters, the digits, the extra symbols, et cetera, et cetera. You just get to choose, and it'll generate this ridiculously long, complex password, but save it into its own database. So let's sum up a little bit about what we talked about today with passwords. Uh, the first thing I want you to realize is that people choose bad passwords. They just do. Passwords are hard to remember, and people are not geared towards picking random things. Second, good passwords are almost impossible to remember. Ten characters, totally randomly generated from lowercase, uppercase, numbers, and special characters, that's not going to happen. Uh, the third thing is that passphrases are an improvement on passwords, um, because they tend to be easier to remember. So, thanks a lot.